Y'all, I'm so happy to be here with this lady today and be able to introduce her to y'all. Uh, this is a friend of mine from Albany. Her name is Q Hall. Qu Quinetta. Quinetta. Is, Quinetta mm -hmm. is her birth name. But y'all know, if you know me, I'm not all that great with names. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she, she has a special place in my heart because her story is much like mine. Pull it up from the bootstraps. And she, um, she put her journey in a book. And it's called Naughty and Necessary. I know that. I know that. And I know what you're saying, girl. But I met Q through Bubbles. We, I had been to Albany, and she said, I, I want you to meet this girl. Y'all will just get along famously. And Susan went on to say that she has opened a bakery in Albany. And we went, and we had lunch. Everything was delicious. Great. So Q is uh, willing to share her story with all of y'all. And is your book available? It is on because Amazon, good, Kindle. Good, yes. Good. Because we're not going to have time probably to touch everything in this book. But so tell us your story, Q. Okay. The title of the book, Naughty But Necessary, it comes from a place where in my life I decided to take the wrong road. Um, and the wrong road brought me back to where I am now, so I don't regret it. No, redemption is a beautiful thing. thing. Yes, it is. And um, in my choosing things that I did in my life a, a while ago, mm -hmm. it was what made me who I am today. Absolutely. So um, I went down the life of doing illegal things such mm -hmm. as, you know, fraud and different things like that wow. that landed me in prison. And prison in my or jail? No. Prison. prison. Yes. Okay. I went to prison twice. I was sentenced to prison three times. Yes, yes. And not only was I sentenced to prison, I had my, my oldest son in prison. I was only able to nurture him 24 hours. I never nurtured him as an infant. I came home, he was three years old. Oh my goodness. Yes. So it was at that moment that I knew things had to change. Mm -hmm. When I came home and I saw him and he was three years old walking around and I had never nurtured him as an infant, uh -huh. thank God for my family and his father. He was one of the ones that came with my family to get him. Um, I decided to straighten my life up. Did you up. have him in prison? I did. You gave birth to him in prison? I did. I gave birth to him in Baldwin County. I did, and um, they only allow you to keep the babies 24 hours. So I had to send him home, and I sent him home with my family, and they took great care of him until I got home. And when I got home, I almost decided to go back down that road, and I had to look in the mirror and ask myself, are you going to do the same thing again? But before I came home, I prayed and I asked God to give me something to go back out with mm -hmm. and don't release me until I had my GED. So I took my test one time. I had been to school in 20 years and I passed and I got my release date in two weeks after that. So I left, I came home and I started my new life. And with my new life, it was so challenging. I was going to say, was it hard? Yes. Yes, it was very hard. Very tempting. Yes, it was very tempting because the main thing is nobody wants to give you a chance yes. when you straighten up. Nobody, You have to really prove yourself yeah. Yeah. because people just don't believe you because you say you've changed. Right, right. And, and um, that's sad, but it is. It, it's very true. It is. And I really wish this day and time that people didn't have to take the bottom of the totem pole type jobs mm -hmm. to take care of their family because it's hard. You know, yes. and I can remember begging for a job at Krispy Kreme like it was Miller's or Procter & Gamble. Uh -huh. But as time went on, things got better. Um, I finally decided to, you know, totally give my life to Christ and just ask God. I said, I've tried everything else. I want to try you. 
<laughs> so <laughs> once I decided that things start to open, he uh -huh. started to open uh -huh. doors for uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. Great things started to happen. Not at once. It was still a struggle. Uh -huh. But I did get the job on the Marine base. And um, yes, that was a good job. It wife. was. It was the best job I ever had. And they they were fine with your record. And yes. Everything. Yes, it was just truly amazing how I got that job. I was working as an optometrist assistant and a lady came in one Saturday that I was working for someone else. I wasn't even supposed to be there. Uh -huh. So I know it was God oh, ordained. Had taken I had taken that, that Saturday from someone else because she had something to do. Uh -huh. The lady that came in, her boyfriend had a position at the Marine base available. And she said to me, because I was checking her out, and I said, Lord, I'll be glad when I find a full-time job. It was part-time. Uh -huh. But God has sustained me for five years on a part-time job. I never missed anything. And it was at that moment she said, do you want a full-time job? I said, I do. And she said, my boyfriend have a position at, and I said, where? And she said, the Marine base. I said, I had so many doors closed in my face. I said, so you're telling me I can have a job at one of the best places in Albany to work at the Marine base? She says, do you have a resume? And it was like 25 years ago. So people weren't walking around with computers and yeah. laptops. So yeah. I said, I have one. She said, would you send it to him? I left work one day because she ran behind me. God used this lady to push me into where I needed to be. And I went on the interview. I got a phone call from a recruiter. It was as a contractor. And the recruiter called me from out of state. And he said to me, I'm flying in to interview you. I said, me? I said, you gonna interview You're me? Right, oh, I said, God. right, I said, me? And he said, yes, ma'am, I will be there. He told me where to be, uh -huh. I went. Uh -huh. He was very impressed with my interview. But there was another young lady that had been referred by the person that was leaving the position. So they normally honor that person's um, referral. Yes. Yes. Well, this time they didn't. We was neck and neck, she was single, she was raising boys, just like uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. And um, we had to interview a second time. And we had to bring the person who we would be working for out. Uh -huh. Once we interviewed, he saw me. And once I finished the interview, I got up to leave. And he told the recruiter, I want her. So I started working on the Marine base. And I stayed there for six years. God kept me gainfully employed as a contractor for six long years. And um, one day, all the government stuff, the political stuff was uh -huh. going on. They started laying people off. Uh -huh. And I asked my supervisor, I said, um, I said, am I, is my job secure? I said, am I okay? And she says, yes. And I had met back up with a friend from over 20 years ago. And he told me, he says, that's not gonna be the place that God have you. And I said, what are you talking about? I like my job. I said, this is a nice job. It takes care of me. I don't know what you're talking about. And he says, go ahead and take your safe serve license. Because I was baking it during holidays for people. Uh -huh. And he says- What is um, a safe serve license? Like when you're working into an establishment that has consists of food, mm -hmm. you have to know all the rules. You have to is know- that, Is that a government thing or is it- it's just across the board. Every okay. restaurant have to okay. have it. Okay. Every restaurant have okay. to have it. So he told me to go ahead and take it, and I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I take it, I, I, I took the wrong one. I had very little money because I was trying to take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. Had a son in college. And um, by this time, the son that I had in prison, mm -hmm. he was in college. Yes. Where was he going to college? He went to college at Pensacola State. He went on a scholarship. We didn't have to pay what for kind of anything. A basketball scholarship. Oh. He's six five. He's an no. amazing yes, he's an amazing young man. You met Tristan, you didn't meet Tyrone. Okay. Yes. I can't remember. You had some family there that there was day, Tristan, my son. Okay. Yes. And um we went, we did that, I took the test again, I passed it. And once I passed the test, I got a call from my supervisor. At and the she, Marine Bank? Yes, she said, I got a text first, it said, I'm sorry. Then I looked behind me and my immediate supervisor was walking in my cubicle. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Miss Hall, can you go to the office with me? 
I said, I already know what y'all gonna do. I started grabbing my stuff. All I knew I was gonna bake. So I grabbed my stuff, I followed him, and I never looked back. I had to be reminded because at that time, because they laid me off, I was eligible for unemployment. Uh -huh. My sister called me and she said, did you file your unemployment? I said, what unemployment? <laughs> She said, oh my goodness, you forgot about your money? I said, I did. I said, but I'm going to be working. I'm working. She said, so you're going to bake? God gave me to clean my den out. It was adjacent to my home. Uh -huh. And he said, make it a bakery, full service bakery. Uh -uh. So I decorated it. I made it a whole bakery. They had just came out with the, um, the, the, it was a, um, a, um, Safe serve, not safe serve, but it was something with the Department of Agriculture uh -huh. cottage food license God. that allows you to never heard of that. Yes. Now, how many years ago was that that you got that license? That was seven years ago, and they just started it. And it is it's a license that allow you to bake and sell out of your home. No. Yes, because I wanted to do things decent and in order. Well, that that was me. I got a business license, but. I wasn't preparing the food where I was supposed to be. Right. Uh, my home was cleaner and better than where I was supposed to be preparing the food. So uh, that I'm happy to know that they have uh, come up with a law like that. Yes. I'm so happy to hear that. Yes. And it has helped so many people. Absolutely. It has helped. So the Department of Agriculture came uh -huh. out and they did, they inspected my home. So they yes. inspect you, uh -huh. you get the fire department out, you know, the whole thing. Yes. And yes. Um, I started going full force, building my people. I started building my audience, building uh -huh. my customers, and they was coming. So it got so, I stayed there two years. But it had gotten so uh -huh. busy, uh -huh. people was jumping. I lived on Gillianville, which is one of the main right, highways right. in Albany. And right. people started parking in the middle of Gillianville, <laughs> letting kids jump out the car and come in the bakery. And I looked out the window and I saw that. I said, oh, my gosh. I said, somebody's going to get killed. Uh -huh. I said, I got to get out of this uh -huh. house. Uh -huh. And I, I had already gotten... My, my whisper from the Lord saying, your time is up here. And I said, but I don't have any money. Where am I going? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? So I told my godmother, which is my prayer partner, she said, go find your building. Your prayer partner encouraged you to go find. Find a building. Find a building. I wasn't financially prepared to get it, but I went right. to find it. Yes. And I found one because one of my friends, that's, she's a surgeon, uh, well, she was in Albany. Now she's gone back to New York. Um, she told me she knew of a building. I went to talk to the man and I told him, I said, if you have this building when I come back, I'm going to get it one day. And he was like, yeah, OK. I came back a year later and it was still empty. And I said, it's yeah. my building. Yes. Is that yes. the one I've been in? No, that's the one before that one. Oh, I stayed okay. there for five years in that okay. first building. Uh -huh. It and was four. Was it, it was fourteen oh six Dawson Road. It was up okay. further towards <laughs> Slappy. Okay, that's okay. where right. I had my first commercial building okay. for five years. So um, I stayed there, and business business was good, but it wasn't a really busy part of town. And um, I eventually moved out to where you came, uh -huh. and business has been great out there. It's near the mall, across Absolutely. from Publix, just everything. So um, my customers have been very supportive. And, you know, through it all, I've, I've done a lot there. I've, mm -hmm. you know, I have offered kids um, decorating classes. I have um, come out with a stream of vending machines that are catered to just me. No. <laughs> Listen, when I visited, <laughs> Q had put in, I think it was your first vending machine. Yes. You could walk up to it. It was on a sidewalk in like a strip mall. You could walk up, put your money in, and select what kind of cake or... Yes. Did you have savory as well? Yes. What, was that your first one? Yes. And yes. only one? Yes. Yes. I thought that was the neatest idea. Because sometimes you just don't want a whole cake. You just want a slice. Uh, I thought it was genius. 
And when you got out of the car, you did tell me that too. I was like, oh, she liked the idea. And you said, y'all, I'm going to have to take a break because I've got, what is that thing called? Ro the robot. The robot vacuum. <laughs> and we tried to turn it off and uh, Mildred just keeps turning back on and keeps back. <laughs> so I'll be right back. I'm going to shut Mildred up. Well, I went back there to check on her. And uh, she told me, she said, the Roomba is already off. So maybe she's done for the day. <laughs> so now, how many of those machines do you have now? I have now three. I have one in the Columbus Mall, uh -huh. one in the courthouse, uh -huh. and I have one at the store outside of my building. Okay. All right. Now, how is the Columbus Mall doing? It's doing good. How do you replenish it? Being We go weekly. Weekly. Oh, okay. Yes. And the courthouse? The courthouse is doing good. The people Which have is all your been number one vending. The one at my shop. Yes. The one at my shop. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> I was so proud of you. Thank you. Uh, when I walked up to your place and saw that vending machine. Um, so how old are your children now? Okay, my children now, um, I have a daughter that's 38. How can that be when you're just 39? <laughs> I have a son that's 28. That's the one that no. I had in prison that graduated from college. Yes. And then I have a son that's 19. That's the one you met. You okay. met Tristan. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Now, the son that graduated from college, what mm -hmm. is he doing? How is he He's using? working for the city of Albany. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Your story is so touching to me, Q, because... It sounds so much like my story. Uh, the only thing, I was not in a prison, a government prison. I was in a prison of my own. Yes. But uh, other than that, that's about the only difference. And uh, once I took responsibility for myself, Q, it was like God had me right where I was supposed to be. Yes. And the miracles just came and came and came and came. Wow. Uh, because I, I was from the era that you got married, your husband took care of you, you took care of the house and the children. Uh, so that was my mentality. But one day I, I got up and I said, you know, I, I'm going to have to move out of that way of thinking. Right. And right. I don't have to take responsibility for myself. And uh, wonderful things started happening. And it sounds like that was the same thing that happened to you. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm so proud. I'm so happy that you're here with me because there are people out there that need to hear your story. Yes. And yes. need to hear my story. Right. Uh, because we bring hope. Yes. I've experienced hopelessness. And that's a terrible, terrible feeling it is. to have to walk around with. It is. So you're my hero. You're one of my oh, heroes. Oh, so sweet. You're one of mine. Oh, I've been loving you goodness. forever. <laughs> well, thank you. And I've you. actually started something since I saw you last. What? I'm doing a pink table. and A it, paint? A pink. Pink table. Pink table uh -huh. where women on the go sit around the table and we talk about things that happen in everyday life. I just launched my first one. It's uh -huh. on my YouTube channel, Mixing It Up With Miss Q. Mixing It Up With Miss Q. Yes. Mixing It Up With Miss Q on YouTube. Yes. So it was a success. It was amazing. And it talked about two other ladies that had gone to prison, uh -huh. redeemed themselves in Albany, oh. and is doing well. Well, I'm going to go visit you. I'll visit you on your YouTube channel, and I hope you'll visit me on my YouTube channel. Yes, I, I, started, I follow you. I started quarantine cooking uh, when everything got shut down and everybody had to stay at home. And I, I, you know, I would just worry about what if somebody's been... Uh, you know, at home by themselves and don't right. do anything. So I said, let's just do some quarantine cooking. I still call it that. Right. But what's the name of it now, Eddie? <laughs> Somebody changed it. Loving best dishes. Loving best dishes. Oh, okay. I still That's like awesome. quarantine cooking. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so 
Uh, Q has driven from Albany today to be here with us. And uh, I hope you won't miss any of the videos because she's actually going to make three videos for us today and share three of maybe her favorite recipes. So please don't miss any. But I did want you to know her background and her story and where she has come from and where she has gotten to. It's truly a heartwarming story. So don't forget, Naughty But Necessary. <laughs> it's on Amazon, it's on Kindle, and um, you can buy it out of my store. Wonderful. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Now let's get our butts in the kitchen and start cooking. <laughs> How about it? <laughs> what you gonna good. cook for us? Hey y'all, it's Paula Dean. Now if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be alerted when I post a video. Love and best dishes, y'all.